Welcome to this IHS wall test tutorial. Let's go ahead and start wall test and select Minifrac as our example type. And we're going to follow along here with the wizard. And we're going to navigate here on our local drive under program files, IHS, IHS wall test, examples. And this is the Minifrac example, Radio Flow. These are installed along with Wall Test. Let's select our first row where our data begins. And fill in these columns. So this is date, clock time. We have case and pressure here. If we had gauge data, we could convert it to absolute in the dialog box above. And this is our water rate. Here we could name our gauge and specify the start time of our test. I'm going to skip that. And in this example, I do not need to import any additional data as our water injection rates were in the same file. Here within the data management tab is where we could synchronize and merge data sets, which is not necessary in this example. In this next dialog box, our data selection has selected our case and pressure as our active pressure that we're gonna use in our calculation, which is correct. And it's already selected our water rates. Here, we would need to remove any unnecessary data before or after the test period, such as when running or pulling the gauge. This is not necessary in this example since it has been done for us. In this next part here, we need to specify the shut-in points. So let's go ahead and scale this axis. And we'll click here. And we get a zoomed in version on the right hand side. So here our water injection rate has correctly been selected through our last pressure. And anytime we select a point, uh, you, you'll automatically highlight that corresponding row in the top hand portion of the screen. And you'll also notice our water rates are negative, which is correct for injection. In this next part, we need to move this red vertical line and specify the start of injection into the formation. And here we need to specify our reservoir. So this is a gas reservoir. Even though I've injected water, I need to specify the reservoir type. So it is a gas reservoir. And here we would recommend filtering the data, which is just going to help speed up the calculation process. Here you'll notice it's defaulted to logarithmic for buildup and fall off, which keep more data in the early time, and arithmetic time steps for flow and injection periods. So this data looks good. And let's go ahead and enter in our reservoir properties. So our reservoir temperature was 76 degrees. Our net pay was 5 meters. Our porosity is 10%. Our gas saturation is 80. And that leaves 20% for our water saturation. Our gas gravity was 0 0.6. Our CO2 gas composition is 0 0.76. 0% H2S and 2% nitrogen. Here we need to calculate our sand phase pressures. Because we are using case and pressures, we do need to convert these to bottom hole pressures. Here in the wall bore editor, we are producing through casing and we'll enter in our midpoint of perforations, which is 2000 meters. There is no tubing installed and our case in depth is 2100 meters. In this next tab, we could customize our pressure loss correlation. And in this next tab, we could enter in a deviation survey. 
So let's return here to the wallboard and hit calculate. Here we could enter in headers such as our wall name or company name, formation name. So let's skip that. And let's start our pre-closure diagnostics. Here we could customize the datum depth for fracture gradient calculations. And let's go ahead here and begin with our ISIP calculation. So we're going to go ahead and draw a straight line and select our ISIP arrow and we'll just drop that there. There is a secondary ISIP method that is used by fracture engineers which I'm going to demonstrate. So we'll go ahead and draw a second straight line through our late time fall off period and read that intersection and that intersection point and we would just drag that arrow to that corresponding point. So this was just for demonstration purposes. I'm going to go ahead and move the arrow back and let's right click and delete this line as well. Let's proceed here to the G function plot. And let's scale this. So the black data is the first derivative. The red is the semi-log derivative which we will conduct our analysis, and the blue is our pressure data. So let's go ahead and draw a straight line here on our semi-log derivative. And this line is anchored through 0, 0. And we're going to select our fracture closure time arrow and synchronized arrow. And we're going to drop it where it deviates from that straight line. And what synchronized arrow does, it places that same arrow on all four plots. And when we click and move the arrow, it also moves it on all four plots as well. You'll also notice that where we've placed it where it deviates, it also corresponds to a maximum on the first derivative on square root time plot. So in this analysis, we've determined our injection volume, our ISIP, our ISIP gradient, and closure gradient. If we right click here, we can add in our shut-in time and we can add our fluid efficiency and net fracture pressure. Let's go ahead and proceed into our after-closure diagnostics. Here we're going to determine our best estimate of initial pressure if we achieve radial flow. So let's go ahead and drop an impulse radial line. And we're going to fit the line through our data. Here what we can do as well is select the spray gun and do a least squared fit through our data. And we should be drawing a straight line through our data points on our semi-log plot above. From this analysis, we've determined kh. And since we've already specified an h, we can calculate a k. And we've determined our best estimate of p star. Let's continue here to our second after-closure diagnostics. Again, here we're going to determine our best estimate of initial pressure if we obtain radial flow. So let's go ahead and drop our radial line and fit it on our derivative plot. Again, from this analysis, we determine kh and calculate a k. And we've also determined our best estimate of p star. We can move in here to our vertical model. And let's go ahead and look at our parameters. On the right hand side, you'll see our wellbore schematic. 
and here our reservoir properties and parameters have already been automatically imported and we would recommend here importing a wellbore volume so I'll select this default button and select our ID which is four inches and enter our total measured depth let's return back to our plots here the blue line is our derivative model that we are trying to match onto our red which is our derivative data and here we want to honor the data after we've seen closure so if we return back to our pre-closure diagnostics we determined our closure time was 0 0.16 hours so we'll go ahead and drop an arrow here at 0 0.16 and let's do a fit through the data after that arrow. So we can select this weights point and spray the data after where we've dropped the arrow. So this is gonna emphasize the data afterwards. And we're gonna to wanna to auto estimate on the parameters here that we have checked off to get a better fit. And before we hit auto let's hit save in case we want to revert back to our initial parameters so that's matched our model a lot better through our data and we can see here on the bottom left hand plot the percentage error between our model and our data so it seems to be less than 0 0.05 percent that concludes our analysis and our tutorial Thank <laughs> you.